The Abbott government has burned significant political capital in the past few months, telling us about how we all must share in the burden of ongoing budget deficits. And most of the proposed solutions to date have been focused on creating budget savings through spending cuts. But there is another important side of that equation that's been largely ignored. How can Australia raise its tax revenue? One proposal is the so-called tax in disguise or the deficit levy. It will hit earners over $80,000 with a new fee of 1% while those over $180,000 a year will be taxed with a new fee of 2%. And how long will the tax last? Well, reportedly as long as Australia remains in deficit or four years under current forecasts. Well, I'm joined by John Freeburn, an expert on taxation and economic policy from the University of Melbourne. John, is this really the most efficient way to get back into the black? No, because uh, it's actually an increase in income taxation. And what we know is that income taxation causes lots of distortions to people's decisions. And if we go back to the Henry Review, uh, the Henry Review estimates for each dollar of tax increase, income tax, would probably lose productivity of the order of 30 to 50 cents. So the deficit levy is going to have a cost, not just of a dollar to the government transfer, but the order of a dollar 30 to a dollar 50. So that's a big kick in the pants to Australia's lagging productivity. What are some of the tax changes that you think need to happen to help us get to that point where we're paying that 4% you know, percent, uh, deficit you know, in, the, in future years? Well, I think the highest priority is actually get rid of the state stamp duties and the state uh, stamp duty, well, the conveyance duty on the transfer of property and the stamp duty of insurance. And if we go back to the Henry Review, uh, the efficiency or distortion costs of those taxes is 60 cents plus. These are really, really bad taxes. You start with a job in the city and then you get a new job, you get promoted and it's out in the suburbs. You had a city house. Well, the smart thing would be to sell your house in the city and move out into the suburbs. Who well, knows? Conveyance duty makes that too damned expensive. So you stop and you spend more and more time driving to your new job, add to road congestion, add to pollution. This is why we've got an economy that's not very productive. And that's why you'd want to get rid of those sorts of taxes. And the sort of obvious replacement, which is really like the 2000 uh, ANTS, a, a new tax system proposal, is you would uh, have a, a broader and higher rate goods and services tax, where it has a uh, distortionary cost of the order of 10 cents per dollar of revenue, which is a mighty gain over 60 to 80 cents. But everyone uh, argues that if we want to have a progressive society, therefore it makes more sense to have progressive taxes because something like the GST overwhelmingly shifts the burden of the tax take on to poorer members of society. Um, isn't that the big problem with, with, with broadening the GST? That's correct. And so what you have to have is a package. And so if we go back to the ANTS package in 2000, what you'd do is you'd have a, a bigger revenue collecting GST, and whether that's done by broadening the base or you have a higher rate, that will push prices up across, across the board. And so for equity, you then are going to have to divert some of that extra money to increase in social security benefits. So the genuine disadvantage are no worse off. And you're going to fund uh, reductions in income tax, which are going to be slightly bigger reductions at the bottom level than at the top. So the remaining income tax would be a slightly more progressive rate schedule, but it would take less revenue with the GST picking up uh, the difference. How big an increase in the GST and how broad a, a, a mix of the GST would need to take place to meet those long-term deficit needs? Well, if we look at the current GST base, it's about 60% of its potential. So if we were to bring in food, health, education, uh, water, childcare, make it like the New Zealand model, then um, we would collect another uh, 40 odd percent revenue. If we were to push the rate up from the current 10%, say to uh, New Zealand's 15%, then uh, that again would uh, another 50% increase in the revenue. It would more than do the job. But remember that 
quite a bit of that extra GST revenue will have to be used in uh, compensating the Social Security recipients and in adjusting the income tax schedule so that most people on the bottom half of the income distribution are not worse off. Thank you. Great, excellent.